This is the Hadley Housing Authority meeting of December 19th, 2023. It is 11 a.m. Welcome aboard. The agenda number, item number one, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. We can also put this under the commissioner's discussion where it probably belongs. Um, Anybody, we have no audience today, so. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, I, don't, I mean, besides you, Helene, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to excuse it. All right. <laughs> Any topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting? Approval of the minutes. We don't have minutes today, so we'll approve the minutes of last meeting at our next meeting, which um, is not scheduled yet. Um, I thought we did schedule it for. We? Do we have a scheduled meeting? Help me. I, I do think written. so. I think she's I have it written down. It was the 30th. December 30th? No, January 30th. Oh, January 30th. I have to look at my notes. I'm not sure I have it with me. All right. Anyway, at the next meeting, we'll review the the minutes of today and of the last meeting. It is January 30th at 11. Okay. Thank you. All right. Executive Director's Report. Financials. So you have your warrant, your uh, the warrant report. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to, Madam Treasurer? Do you want to present that? Okay. So, uh, Rich and I went. We go through these every two weeks. Yep. And there's nothing unusual at all uh, on the warrant reports. So. I move that we approve the warrant report for 11 2 and uh, for 11 30 to 11 30. 4,399 dollars and 71 cents and approve the warrant for okay, 11 30. Uh, there's two pages of that for. Three thousand six hundred and forty-six dollars and eighty-three cents. Okay. Do I have a second to approve those I'll two? Do the second. Thank you, Richie. Discussion. Discussion. Although I vote no uh, on the warrants uh, in keeping in past practice of mine, I do have a question uh, on the JRB disposal and excavation. It's a lot of money. Two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. What uh, What did they all do, and why so much? That was, that's the sewer line over at Berkeway needed to be cleaned out. The sewer line? Yeah, and it's long. It runs all the way from, what is that? East Street. East Street, all the way through. Okay, because I so see in the description it says 104 Berkeway clean out, but it didn't say it's sewer. Clean out the sewer? No, 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 it's the clean out. It is the clean out. And we are being reimbursed for that. Um, uh, TPP tenant preserva uh, preservation project is reimbursing us for that. So I do. I, I apologize. It is for that 104. So, right, the, so what is the cleanup? What what, of, what, uh, what does that mean? Cleanup. Clean out the unit of. Oh, the property. unit. Oh, okay. So that's not the sewer. Not no, no. I, I misspoke. Yep. It's, okay. it's the unit, and then and we will be the housing authority will be reimbursed the full amount. Okay. So this is getting ready to re. Uh, rent that unit. That's correct. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> and I have a question, please, Mr. Chairman. As far as painting number 23, 28, and 37, who were the people that did the painting and was was it also done by our by our maintenance people? So the, that's for just for the paint. So but it is paint? that is the paint and our and our maintenance people did do the painting. That's to Sherwin Williams. They're just above that amount. So Sherwin Williams, the paint company, there's yes. no government contact track with them. So that's the actual supplies. Oh, it's just supply. It's yeah. not the painting. It's the supply. Right? Yeah. And then I have one. Are you done, or you have another one? Yes, Commissioner uh, Chairman. No, then I have yes, Mr. Chairman. And then I have one other question on the uh, 1120 invoice for legal services, another $1,033. What was that in relation to, and did we pay the correct hourly rate of the 165 an hour? We did pay the correct hourly rate. 
uh, Rich and I both reviewed those. That is the correct hourly rate, and it is for legal services for Hadley Housing Authority. For tenant stuff, okay. It's always for tenant stuff for <laughs> I guess, all right, thank you. All right, if no other discussion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Sue. Yes, on 11-30-23, Gary DePace, $1,116. What is that about? Yeah. The, so one would be, it's 558 a month. One was for the October bill, and the second was for the November bill. So it's two We months. pay two months. And while we're talking about, do we find it, did you get a chance to call Warren to try to find out? It's point of order. We are working on Warren. Yeah, okay, okay. can you, can you hold that question? Yeah, that. I remember what you're talking about. All right, anything else on those two warrants? If not, uh, a vote to approve. In favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. And, and, I, and I vote no. And one vote no. And, yeah. No abstentions. No. Okay. All right, that's the warrants. Treasurer's report for November 30th. I'm looking at... I move that we, do we approve the treasurer's report right now? Um, do we vote on it? Okay. Yeah, it's not necessary, but you can. Okay. So we don't, this is not a votable thing. This is a report from Gary DePace for, uh, uh, you know, October, November, showing the differences. So the beginning of this fiscal year and no votes needed. I just would point out uh, the uh, on the second page, the amount over under. So you'll go to the next to the last column and you'll see that you've got several numbers here uh, that are in parens and that that means we're we've spent more than not, not more than we have in the budget, but prorated. So by the end of November, we're a bit over on legal expenses, uh, administrative other by a very small amount, and electricity. But everything else uh, appears to be in order. I'd also like, Harry, you had some questions about last time about the debits and credits. That's a formatting problem. I think it makes it look like it's not right, but oh. the debits and credits from last month that we were looking at, that there was a credit, I mean, there was a question about whether or not the debits and credits were in the correct column. They were. It's just that it's a formatting issue, so it makes it look a little off kilter, but it's correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman, is, if we're a bit over on legal expenses, is it something that doesn't have a cap on it? You could, a housing authority can spend as much as they want on, as long as they don't drain the budget on legal expenses? And, and any line item, we, we spend what, the, what we need to spend, but then if it's above uh, plus or, or minus 10%, we have to do a budget revision. So we, we don't typically not go through legal channels just because of money. We're, we're actually required by the lease and the regulations in many instances to use legal resources. I think that's something that we, we should all as a board understand. And I didn't ask you, please. I, I guess. I'm not talking to you. I'm addressing yes. the chair. Mr. Chair, that, that's on the expenditure of legal expenses we frequently have questions about that, but we have to. I mean, the, the, our executive director has to uh, spend this money for legal expenses. It's required, you know, basically by law. Thank you. Um, one thing I'm going to ask about is the rent roll, the 667 rent roll between October and November is dramatically different. Could you remind us um, why that is? 
So this, I'm actually looking at it too, David, and it doesn't look right. That doesn't look right to me. Something's, something's wrong that it's that low. Um, I, I will have to check into that with okay. um, pull my own reports from PHA and then also discuss it with Gary. All right. Um, because it, it, it's not, I don't think it's explainable with uh, rent redeterminations that the rents would have gone down that low. We don't have another vacancy. Um, the rent roll is what, what is what everyone owes. Yeah. So it's regardless if they pay or not. So I will check into that and get back to you. Oh, I good. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, I have a couple more questions. Again, yes, again, in keeping with that our fee accountant, uh, Mr. DePace, puts together his numbers here. So on this uh, Hadley Housing Authority monthly expense through November under legal, we have $1,333.33, yet we just approved the bill of $1,033. Why is it $300 more on his report? It's not reflective of what we're paying here. Uh, it's on this report here that Mr. DePace puts together, again, compiling his own set of numbers. Why is it $300 more, but it's not, we're paying $300 more? It's from a previous month. The pro rata is the, the, what we've spent to date in the fiscal year. So in a previous month, sometime between October 1st, so it must have been in October that we spent $300, $300 to a, Attorney O'Donnell. On a different warrant? Yes, yep, the previous month. But within the same fiscal year, the pro rata is what, what we're at to date for, for the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> That'll end discussion on the treasurer's report. Property management report. Okay. So we do have um, the you can, you, unit vacancy report. Yep. We do have uh, current six mm -hmm. units. Um, of the four Golden Court units, we do have uh, two tenants ready to go. Two, excuse me, two applicants ready to go. Um, but it's pending maintenance ready. And with, I believe I updated the board last month about uh, HLC coming out, uh, Tom Boyer, and he's giving us more money to renovate the units further than what we had anticipated. So we're just in a standing, a standstill right now. Our, our crew is doing painting, cleaning, floors, things that we know we're going to be doing. And we're just waiting for the go ahead from HLC to do cabinets, and um, there's two of the units are getting some pretty significant ADA uh, improvements. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting for that money before we can go. Any um, idea on the timetable for when they'll be ready for tenants? I, I no. really hope the first quarter. I mean, and it first seems, quarter. and again, we're, it's HLC has got this initiative, but they're, everyone, we're waiting on them. Can okay. you t let us know how much money you were able to get? Because this is great news. Yeah, it's close. So for um, two, one, one of the units, uh, the 104 Burke Way, uh, we're looking at $250,000 from HLC to renovate that unit. And then for here at, at Golden Court, we're looking at another 200 or so thousand dollars for the improvements of the four units that we have. So it's a significant amount of money. Yeah. Thank you. It's all over the news how many families are waiting for housing. You know, it's top top news story last night, as a matter of fact. So it's, it'd be great to uh, get that done. Want a lot of money. Yep. Can, you can build a house for 250000 I'm surprised that's what they give us for renovating a apartment. But I, well, we I'm not complaining. Yeah. yeah, it's prevailing wage. We have to pay prevailing wage. Right, wages. right, right. So it's... It's you used to be able to build a house for $250,000. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's probably true. And then the attendant accounts receivable is still growing higher, um, which is also an indication with the um, legal fees. We are desperately trying to work with TPP, and TPP is trying to assist with uh, several tenants as well. Um, but they, they can only assist as much as the tenants will allow. Um, tenants should be able to, once they get a notice to quit for an, a non-payment issue, should be able to apply for raft money, um, and we would assist them with that. Um, TPP would assist them with that, but it's just, it doesn't always work. 
and there's uh, oftentimes some other barriers involved. So we're, work we're working as diligently as we can to get the, get the tar down and preserve the tendencies at the same time. Have we resolved the late fees from tenants that state that they shouldn't be being charged late fees because of the rent thing? Have we resolved any of that business there no, we yet? We tried to work with TPP on that too, and it's... We're not getting anywhere? We're not getting anywhere, no. So that's... So that matter is still out there unresolved. And um, are there glitches in people getting re recertified, or what's the proper way to talk about that um, adjustment, the adjustment? Um, some people, we have problems with some people not doing it in a timely manner, which is a lease violation, um, and we just try to work through that with them. Um, and what would happen if somebody doesn't do it in a timely manner, we're required by regulations to do a best guess effort. And what that is, is um, especially in the instance of folks that are on a, a benefited uh, income, so Social Security or um, TADC, they, we use the inflation factor that Social Security puts on it. Okay. And then we just take away all deductions, and that usually is a, a catalyst to get people to come in and do what they, they need to do. Okay. I hope that gets it done. Yeah. Um, It'd be great to meet the new property manager. Uh, that yes. Is it going to happen or is it going to happen? It, it will, yeah. Okay. Will. What, um, when is the office open here again? Mondays and Fridays. Mondays and Fridays, and Fridays. 10 to 4, 10 to... No, 9 to 4, 9 to 4. 9 to they're 4. Here, they're typically here 8.30 to 4.30, but the window's uh -huh. open 9 to 4, or by appointment. If somebody Except needs. for lunch. Except for lunch, yes, I'm sorry, 1 to 12, although okay. they're still here. And then we'll make an appointment if those times don't work out for somebody. So that's our 16 hours, Monday and Friday. Yeah. yeah. But then we'll, again, we'll come any other time that they need it to. Okay. And the new person's working out pretty well so far? So far, so far. Okay. I don't hear anything <laughs> about gaining, that. She's gaining confidence. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, do we need a window project update? Yeah, we're just, it's, it is really just in the hands of HLC right now, trying to get all the documents ready for, it It needs to come back to the board, and the board will have to make that final completion approval, um, and then we'll be paying out the, the funding. Okay. And anything usual on the work orders? Nothing. Work order reports. Other than we're, we're re-, uh, we're re Structuring how we're doing vacancies. Okay. We're going to be putting in um, because it's set, you know you put out a vacancy work order and it lists everything that they're doing, but that work order could be open for a month and a half, so it doesn't tell me what's done and when it's done. So I've been working with our new director of facilities, saying I would like it in um, you know a plumbing work order for a vacancy, electrical, painting and so on, so that we can break it down, okay, see good. which maintenance man's there, att attribute the correct number of hours and supplies, and, and really get a, a better picture of what happens in the vacancy. Excellent. That makes sense. Uh, and the heating systems are being, uh, I see here we have uh, a boiler cleaning coming up. Yeah. Or a couple of boiler cleanings. Is that, is that going to solve the problem of the heat going out from time, rare as it may be, uh, heat and hot water goes out occasionally? Do you think the cleaning will be able to solve that problem? It always helps eliminate um, multiple calls, and it, you okay. hopefully may find something ahead of time, like, if, you know, the clog nozzle, or does the nozzle need to be replaced? Um, right. But it won't eliminate everything. I mean, yeah. you can always hope. They're okay. not very old pieces of equipment, but okay. <laughs> hopefully. I hope so. They're on site this morning. It says here scheduled for today at 8. And uh, the, this, this was morning. the update that uh, Pam gave us. Yes, this morning one of the maintenance men was here. They were here. Yeah. Okay, anything else unusual going on? Good or bad? No? Okay. No, all good. The Commissioner's <laughs> discussion. Uh, first thing we have is an ad for the ED and funds for the ad. Sue, this is something you're looking after. We have an ad approved. Ad approved, I think letter of ad approved, and then the ad itself. Okay. Which I'll give everybody a copy of. 
so we've agreed to run an ad, and what's it going to be, uh, well, two weeks? That's part of the discussion we're having today. Yeah. What newspapers have we decided? What internet have we decided? It has to be run for, for two weeks. Okay, are you looking after all that? Okay, well, you're kind of like a one, myself, one woman subcommittee here. No, not by myself. Okay. People have to uh, participate. <laughs> Does everybody have a... Pamela, I don't have one. Who, who approved it? Evelyn. Okay. Do you have um, confirmation of that approval? Yes, I do. It says right here, good morning. Ad looks good. When replacing the ad, please spell out the position executive director EXDC in the attached document. You are good to go. Evelyn Musaya. So and can it's you dated December 15th, 11, 11 a.m., two days ago. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, that would need to be in the documents uh, so that all the well, I'll get copies made. I just have this one that was printed out. So okay, we'll thank you. And you, uh, you know where you want to run it? No, that's what part of the discussion today oh. was about. You have recommendations for where to run it for the board? I have recommendations, but we have to discuss it. Okay. Springfield Republican, Daily Hampshire Gazette, and Greenfield Recorder. Okay. Those and then, indeed, uh, on the internet. Now, considering the fact that all these newspapers also put it on their on their website, yeah. you know, everyone can see it along with seeing the actual paper itself, we have to decide if the internet one suffices and two papers. In other words, can we have two newspapers and one internet that's strictly internet only? How do we decide that? That's what um that's what we're here for oh. to discuss. Pam, how has it been done in the past? So there's a there's a list of ten other organizations in the PHN that I had provided you. Per, uh, previously. Yes, I have them right here. It's, that's a minority newspaper. Right. You have to you have to list them in those. You right. Strongly encourage. Strongly encourage. But it's sick, we were told. That's the Springfield Republican is considered a minority newspaper. It's not, and who's we? It's not on your by, by calling the Springfield Republican. Who is, who is we? You you consistently refer to we, and I don't know who you're talking about. Anybody? I, I call the Springfield Republican, and other people I talked to who called to follow up to make sure what I, the information I was getting was correct, and they they are considered a minority newspaper. But they're not on the DHCD or the HLC list. As well, minority. that's one thing we're here to discuss right. today. So I would just, I would strongly encourage Nobody has shown me any reason that they're not, though. You gave us this list, and they, they say actually, they're a minority, so where do we go? You're, you're telling us one thing, and the Springfield Papers right, telling so, us thank you, sir. So I, I, I would suggest to the commissioners that you follow what's in the public housing notice from mm -hmm. HLC and use those minority newspapers. They truly are minority in the sense of they'll publish in different languages. They have a different readership. Okay. So I would, I, and the use The more the merrier, right? I yeah, mean, well, yeah. we have to decide today at this meeting, hopefully, what are the papers we're going to be putting it in. Okay. The Daily Hampshire yeah. Gazette, the Springfield Republic, the Greenfield, uh, and does indeed count as towards a newspaper, even though it's an online only. How can the commissioners answer Well, that's why questions? we're here for discussion. It's, it's, it's a discussion well, item on our agenda today. Which, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Um, these items that, it, was there anything else, Sue, that we, you're thinking we need to? Just to know, we, if we have to, we have to um, put them in the newspaper for two weeks. I have the, I have all the amounts that each newspaper costs per inch. If, so today, before we leave, or by, before we advertise, I want to know what papers we choose. And is it true that we have to use one of these minority newspapers when Springfield tells us they're a minority? Uh, so I can't de devalue what they're telling me, that they are a minority. Okay, so Mr. Chairman. Yes. Okay. Uh, so those are all things we, we it, in my estimation, we can discuss today. However, we would need to vote on this. Uh, well, I understand that. The but we cannot vote today because, according to open meeting law, it has to be listed on the agenda, and there was no vote it listed. Is listed on the agenda. No, no. Uh, the fact that it would be voted on is not listed on the agenda, so the public did not receive notice that a vote would be taken. Have you ever heard of having to put that we're going to vote on it when the subject matter is written on the agenda? That means it's comprehensive. 
No, it does not. It has to be listed that there will be a vote taken, and there is no listing that a vote would be taken for this or B, C, D, and E. That's our, that's our hang-up. So if, if we're going to move forward with, the, with this and we have to drag it back over to the January 30th meeting because this, it was not done. Um, Harry. Um, we voted to place the ad at a prior meeting after it was approved by the EO L H C. I finally got that right. Um, Close. And then the only thing was what newspapers it was going to be in. Right. I don't know if that requires another vote to exactly. vote which newspaper. Just a minute. Another vote on which newspapers it has to go in. And it really baffles me that this process has taken so long for a 16 hour position when we began this back in August for discussion. Mm. But I don't understand why we need to vote on what newspaper <coughs> this has to go in. We voted to put an ad in, so why do we need now a vote I, in which newspaper? I'm asking Mr. Chairman to which newspaper I, this has to go I in. I can't answer the question. I don't remember the, the past. Panel, uh, yeah. Prior executive director searches that you may or may not have been involved with. You the law always a vote on the newspapers. Does the law say there has to be a V next to items that we're voting on in an agenda? I'm, I'm unclear, but that's traditionally uh, what we've done. Um, so it does give the impression that we're discussing and that we're not voting. Um, so I'm cons I am a little concerned about it. Um, Harry, I think you might have a point there that we voted previously. I, I did also remember, and I honestly didn't look it up, I haven't had a chance. I thought there was a meeting afterwards where you had said that you weren't in favor of, a, of, of right. putting it out right now because the board was split and that you wouldn't, there wouldn't be a consensus on hiring someone, potentially. Exactly. I don't remember. But I don't know if that went to a vote or if that was just a comment. But um, the other, I, I mean, I think- Well, there's no know. question the board is divided. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That has been apparent Harry, a yeah. long time. Yeah. But I, I mean, you could discuss, I do think you need a subcommittee formed. I mean, I talked also about having a professional um, for 16, but the fact that this has been going on for such a long time, we we were under the standing as soon as it got okay by DHCD. Who is we? Board members that were that no. we were ready to go. Then why did we even bother waiting all those months to get our ad okay? If now there's another stumbling block, to there's me this is, there's an obstructionist here, no. and I think that. And so with this all point. due respect, I'm right. trying to get the obstructionist out of the way. I'm telling you, you hand over your search to DV Mainsail or Mass We, we want to try it ourselves. But you're this failing. is only 16. You're not able to get it done. Yes, because you're standing in the way constantly. I'm actually yeah. not. Okay, excuse, okay. Excuse okay let's, not, let's not do this, all right? Um, and, and, excuse and, me, Mr. Chairman. I yeah. take umbrage with that. She's saying, I'm, I have yes. done nothing but give you information. No, over and over. I, I most to a certain amount. Okay, so guys. Amount. Right. You're, you're mistaken. I've given you every bit of information. Put it on all the newspapers. <laughs> put it on Massonaro. It doesn't cost a thing to put it on Massonaro. Advertise it. But you also need a committee that's going to be reviewing the applications well, we coming about through. That, right. But yeah. you haven't gotten there yet. Well, we were waiting forever to have the ad okay because of lack of communication from DHCD. Well, so, yeah. Okay, so you've gotten the ad approved. Yes. Now we have a discussion on where to place the ad, and uh, the money. And if we have to wait as many months as we had to wait for our ad to be okay, we're going to be forever um, getting this ad in the newspaper. Mr. Yeah, I want to get this whole has, thing over with. In the 20 years with. I've lived here, no one has had to go through what what we have to go through as a board to get this ad in. They did. I've sat with other. Executive directors, and it's, it's never true. happened. Right. And they actually did that with Mary Billion's hiring. Yeah. So no way. Okay. I was here. And it didn't we're not yeah. part of it, ma'am. Um, we're not part of yeah. it. I was part of it. Yes, I was. All right, let's keep it constructive here, okay? Uh, my, well, no, we my, can't go through another meeting where we get nothing done. This is why nobody shows up to these meetings anymore. It's pathetic to watch Mr. us. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairperson. Yeah, Reese, uh, quickly. Maybe we can get 
movement on this with a subcommittee that can take on all of this, two people working together, uh, because it, it, it has, it, it needs more eyes than yours. So for 16 hours, this is not a 40 hour week doesn't job. Doesn't matter. It's still, and you're going to lose anybody with all this stalling that it's might Okay, hang on a second, guys. All right, I don't want the back and forth stuff, please. Um, I wonder if the holidays are not a great time to no. advertise anyway, or you think it's a good time? Any what? time is a good time because we've been putting this off, as Harry said. For All right, Sue. So then how about I appoint you as the subcommittee, a one-person subcommittee? It's going to be you. I don't want to be a one-person subcommittee, but I also who do you, don't who want other like people to work who with are on a million other subcommittees to be part of it either. What about Richie? Would you like to work with no, Richie? No, because he's this? already in. He's on. He's already on the CPA. He's already on treasurer. That's not true. Richie. Well, I'm just saying he's That's on the not... subcommittee of policies. I want somebody on the subcommittee that is not on a subcommittee. Well, I'm leaving. You know, I got three more meetings. Um, well, Harry's three more got meetings, one we can more get meeting. a lot done. What's that? With three meetings, we can get a lot done. Well, I told you I was in favor of you if this was that important going <laughs> forward, but I didn't really want to be working on it. So I'm sorry. I'm going to back out too. Well, of course. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Chairman. So I would suggest that you use the local newspapers that she said I, w I would not use Indeed because it's going to cost a lot of money. Use the, use the Republican, use the Gazette, use Mass Naro, and then put it in those other minority newspapers that DHCD, HLC put in the public housing notice. But we only need three total. Then so how three? Then pick three of them. So what I'm saying is, if you're saying Springfield's not a minority, they're not on the list. I'm just saying to go by the list. Right. Because make, just make it easy. Just follow the list that HLC gives you. Pick three, put it in the Republican, put it in the Gazette, put it on Masonaro. That sound reasonable? I don't know. It's hard to think right now after all we've gone You're through. You're getting the okay to do that. Yes, but I'm just saying, I, have, I can't answer you at the moment which ones we're going to put it on. We ha I thought we were going to have a discussion. Pamela, I'm not we are having a Excuse discussion. Excuse me. Pamela yeah. has just stated to put it in these papers that you have identified. That's three. but Not, a, not indeed, okay, because these, indeed might pick it up off of these anyway, but we're not going to pay for indeed. Mm -hmm. So she's suggesting put it in these three. And Mass Naro. But they're not and Mass Yeah, but they're not minority, she's saying. Hey, that hey, means hey. a fourth paper. No, you have to put it in more, that you have to put it in the minorities, too. How many minority papers? I'd have to, I'd have to look it up, but it is, it's, a, it's a number of them. If you'd like, send it, send it to me with David on it. The Housing Authority will post it. We'll give you back the confirmation that it's posted. And then it's, it's posted. So if you're saying there's three total and we have to pick one from this minority list. I didn't and say one. You said one has to be a minority. And no, Springfield, that's you're not saying no, it's not a No, she didn't say that. She said these three. Well, then, well, then we don't have a minority because it's not on the minority I'm list. Gonna, I'm going to post it to the minorities according to what the public housing notice says. I'm going to follow the, the, and the directive of HLC. Uh, I have a question. That sounds good to me. I mean, no, it sounds good to you because you're not helping. It sounds oh, good to you, of course. God. Sue, I, I don't think you're hearing. I hear. I'm, all I'm getting is mixed messages from people. Well, I think we're all saying, put it on the three: the Springfield Republic, uh, the uh, New Hampshire, uh, the Hampshire Gazette, and the Greenfield or whatever. Mass Narrow, there. Yeah, Mass Narrow. And all, all the minority ones that... All the minority? We only need one minority. Why would we put it on all I'm, the minority? I'm not sure that's, that not, not, that's not read. true. <coughs> that's the thing you're, you're not hearing. I am, but I'm hearing many things from many people. So what I'm saying is that the Housing Authority will properly post this. Just. I, I have a question on the, the minority. <laughs> The minority ones here. I mean, they're out of Boston, Roxbury, Jamaica Plain, Boston, Worcester's the closest to us. How is this beneficial to us? The three newspapers that we've listed that you said is fine to advertise. From Springfield, the Connecticut border to the Vermont border, we've got the whole I-91 corridor covered. Right. So, what? just pick one of these. I'll double check the number of it, but it would, it, it, if it's only one, then I would choose Worcester. 
because it's the closest it's to close us. To <laughs> but Worcester, but not Springfield. Yeah, I know. I'm saying no, no, she, Springfield. She said Springfield is fine. But we don't need to pay for four. Is what I'm saying. We're paying for extra. We don't need to pay why, for more. Why? Why are you? Because you're paying. Everyone worries about expenses here. No, you can't get an audit because we don't have the money. No, we can't have an independent. You know, everything we ask for, it all comes down to money. But now we're going to pay for four newspapers when we only need three. Does that How make much sense? How much to run an ad? Because it's a lot, it, it a lot of money. Is it a lot of money? A lot of money, yes. Hmm. Well, I'm okay with leaving it up to Pamela, and thank you, Pamela, for, for helping with this, to confirm what we have to do, according yes. to the executive office, regarding minority papers and any other restrictions that they insist on, and getting back to us within, is a week enough, or it's holidays right now? Uh, if I can do it the first week of June, January. Well, then first, that's, that's, here we are putting it off again. It's the next week, because... ma'am. Can, can we have a holiday break? Yes, but uh, this is something I wanted to do before the holidays. Because you have to run it for two weeks. Susan, it's, a, it's going to be a process that doesn't go as fast as Do you have a you candidate would. in mind? Do you, have, do you have a candidate in mind? No, I don't have a candidate. But, <laughs> but for a 16-hour week job, if you have to run it for two, okay, so two you, weeks... And so then we I give and then we give a sixty day notice. The person's not gonna wait around for a sixteen hour a week job with no benefits. We're gonna lose people, we're gonna have to advertise again because of the whole way this is set up for failure. I'm not sure who set it up for failure, but it's the whole way it's set up and you're set and the way we're sitting here, keep putting things off over and over again is setting us up for failure. So today today is the nineteenth. There we have a holiday break starting this <laughs> weekend. No, I'm sorry. I guess. Yeah, let's go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Pam. Come on. I'll post it because I will not give her one reason to think that we're. So we'll post it and we'll get it in the paper right during the holiday so that people won't be looking at it. So instead of waiting for January 2nd or 3rd, we'll get it in the paper right away. That, that should be part of the discussion. The other thing is, I'm, I'm so sorry no, to no, cut no. you off. It does say that the, the resumes are going to you. Do you want the resumes to go to you? It has to go to the chairman, according it to does Evelyn. Not. It doesn't. Well, that's what I was told. No, was that another it's in the mistake? It's in the public housing notice. OK. It's in the public. Who was it going to go to then? Can you double check I that? I don't know, because David said he didn't want to be involved in it. So David? I don't care if the resumes are emailed to me, but I'm going to pass them along to other people, yeah? Uh, given that it would probably, from this discussion alone, be better for uh, mm -hmm. Ms. Oppenheimer to not be so low on this, we do need someone else on this subcommittee to help her with some understanding. Mm -hmm. Not some understanding. Okay, thank you. I was told information. I'm repeating the information. It's not as though I okay, haven't I think two things, two It's things not are... as though I haven't worked on this ad over and over again, keep repeatedly sending it into Boston to only be ignored over and over until they finally answer. Okay, enough. They're really busy. They're not ignoring you. They're now, really how busy. do you spell well, Mass Narrow? How, well, okay, Chairman Oppenheimer, I'm going to ask you to take it easy for a minute, okay? Um, yeah. We're trying to make progress I'm here. It's it Months we've been working on this, and I'm taking it easy, right? Uh, Chairman Oppenheimer, I, you know, I'll take a vote to excuse you from the meeting that you really wanted to get something done at, and uh, that would be a really unhappy thing for me to well, do. Okay. So uh, the editorializing, I don't think, moves anything any yeah. faster. So things are happening more slowly than we'd like to see them happen. That's the rule around here, okay? So we have to take a deep breath and accept that we're work working with the government, okay? The state government, which is famous for, I'll say, inefficiency. I think that's fair. We have an executive director willing to help us with this process. And I think she's sincere that she's not trying to get in the way or mess things up or obfuscate, you know, in any way. I think we should accept that help and appreciate it and try to move forward at the pace that the state allows us to. I don't want you taking your vacation time to put and add in these papers and do the research you need to do to figure out where the ad should go. And I tend to agree that this is not a great time, the holidays. But no to, time, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Okay, then we can no disagree. No time has been good for, for we okay. keep putting this off over and over. When All is right. a good time? Sue, thank you. Then we'll go ahead and we'll run it now. And as I said more than once over the past meetings, I don't expect a long line of qualified candidates to come in, which is part of the reason why I'm willing to help with the process, okay? 
do you think we're going to find people more qualified, more experienced um, than Ms. Rogers? I don't. So um, that's why I'm kind of willing to go through the exercise. I'm happy to be surprised, but I'll be really surprised if people show up for a 16 hour a week job to help in Hadley. So, all right, I don't, I don't want any more yelling here. So yeah, Pamela, if you and staff are willing to get the, make sure what the right places to place the ad are and go ahead and place them, keep us uh, um, up to date in writing, please. Mm -hmm. Then that will be concrete progress. And within a week or two weeks, or by the end of the first week of January, mm -hmm. we should know where the ads have to be placed, where the ads have been placed, and what it's going to cost us. And I don't want to take votes on budget right now. Let's get the real numbers and vote to approve them. And um, basically, it sounds like you're going to go ahead and place the ads after the first week in January once you find out where. Is yes, appropriate? as long as you have, you've given me the understanding that I can spend that extra money. I, it's going to come out of the administrative other, so okay. I'll, I'll spend the money that's necessary okay. um, to place the She's ads talking about the ads. for the, the ads. Uh, public housing. Right, we've already, I think we've and already had we'll, we'll do like a back backhanded vote afterwards to approve Okay, them. so this will be the first run, all right? That's the way I look at this. We're doing sort of the least expensive way of doing the targeted places that the executive office wants us to advertise and we'll see what kind of result we get and I guess my opinion really doesn't matter but I'll be shocked if we get quali really qualified people coming in for this kind of a job in this kind of a town so this is the first run all right and it's now moving very quickly all right so and we're using our own staff to do it i don't know if that's weird or not there's something that feels weird to me about asking the people no. that are maybe being asked to leave it to it feels weird to me mr chairman yes yeah it does but um it's maybe it's a normal. maybe it's, it's a blessing <laughs> but um the one thing i i would say is i will stay on as sending whether we don't want any resumes to disappear that's where things could get really ugly if people say well i sent you a resume and you say, I never saw it. And then you're looking at me, well, why didn't you be the person? So let's have a board, you know, a board, I'll, I'll volunteer. If, if the executive office is asking for the chair to be the recipient of the resumes, then I will do that. I'll still be around for more than a month. So um, till the end of March, right? So that gives us time to collect what resumes come in. And we're gonna spend whatever's necessary to do the minimum amount of advertising that the executive office requires to us. Okay, so just to review, hang on a second, Harry. Yes, sir. Chairman Oppenheimer, we're now placing the ads where the executive office is asking um, housing authorities to place their ads and paying for them. And I am receiving the responses to the ads personally. Okay, and I, can you just double check on that? Yep. Because I, um, I have not been working on this. All right, so this should be considered progress. And then we can discuss, if we get no strong candidates, we can discuss what to do next. All right, this has never been my solution to improving the management at the Hadley Housing Authority. I have wanted to take the issues that have come up, personality issues, management tenant relations issues, and address them as issues um, as they stand, not as that we have a umbrella problem here that people who are managing the place are doing a bad job, all right? I think we have individual issues, and somebody a lot smarter than me once said, the seeds to the solutions to problems are always in the problems themselves. So does that make sense to all of you? It makes a lot of sense to me. And we'll remember what Mr. Cleaver said, our old friend Eldridge, that um, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So right now, I think perhaps we're part of the problem and not uh, helping the solution. I don't necessarily think that a new ED is going to solve the operational problems that we have here. I'm sorry if I'm making a speech here, but this is how I feel strongly. Um, I, I think our current ED is perfectly strong enough and smart enough to consider the changes that we would like to see in Hadley whether it's tenant relations stuff, whether it's the wording of flyers that go around, whether it's uh, the quickness that notices to, quick, to quit go out or whatever. We should be talking about them as issues and problems individually 
and trying to be smart enough to come up with solutions for those individual problems, working with the people we've been working with. That's my feeling. My feeling is it's going to be a shock that if we get candidates who can handle these kind of things better than the current team. All right, I'm sorry to go on so long about that. Anybody else want to editorialize? All right. If, I, I, yes, I just want to Commissioner Chadwick. recall what I had said a few months back. Because this board is a divided board, and this is my last meeting after two years on this board. And uh, David has just said that he's going to be done in another three months of the term of his governor's appointment. So if there's two of us gone, and then I don't know what happens in May at the town election. That's Richie Whitkiss's position is up for a new five-year deal there. We don't know what happens there. This board could conceivably have two people on it uh, and both tenants. I, I, I don't know what happens going forward with this board. Uh, and I have always come to this board meeting with the financial questions, the concern about independent audits, uh, oversight, all of that, not all the other administrative things, although I've touched upon them here and there where I felt I could help, and I haven't been able to. So, so what actually happens in this discussion? We, we get the ads in, we get resumes, I'm gone. If it doesn't get done by March, he's gone. We don't know what happens in May with his position. What happens with this board? So I did receive... Um a, uh, email from the town administrator asking me for a blur for um, for your position, so that they're going to they're going to advertise for the position, and then they'll be meeting with the housing authority once they get candidates, and the housing authority and the select board will be um, appointing somebody else. Um, David, I thought your p was five years. I thought. Your governor's appointee was five. I haven't, ex you know, other people have asked me the same question. I do believe that the governor's appointee is for five years, but I think they looked at me as taking over for the woman that left. Okay. So I'm just finishing her term. This, there's been no discussion with me about what, regarding the length of my term. I haven't explored that. I'm sorry. So they would, they would appoint until the next, to, until the May election. It was. I believe you originally were appointed in January, Harry, and then you, you were put on the ballot and you were elected. It's going to take that same process if there's if a candidate comes forward to say they'd like to be on the ballot. Right, and what I understand is if no one comes forward, they're going to put my position on the May election. So people have to take out papers yes. and yeah. fill out that, and then Richie's position as well. Yeah. Um, David has told me that when he got his letter and you have the letter, um, was back in December of 2022, and he came to his first meeting, I believe, on <coughs> December 27th, the last meeting we had in December. And you asked him, was he sworn in? And he said, yes, I was, and all that. And in his letter, which was odd, because Charlie, Charlie Baker was our outgoing governor, and in the letter, David said that he was appointed through April 12th of 2024. I found that odd when I heard that, and I haven't seen the letter, but he has it. And I guess the question is, was he because he was the outgoing governor, he gave a year and three and a half months, if that's the letter he got? Because Dave's right and everyone's right, the governor is a five-year appointment. And Kristen Yazerski, who was the prior one, and Richie can validate this, she did serve five years from 19 to, uh, or 17 to 22 yeah. in May, the way I understand the numbers. So if David's truly done uh, his letter April 12th, then the new governor is Maura Healy. Mm -hmm. Would she be appointing for a new five-year term? I don't know all that minutia. I, I don't know I, guess, uh, I might have the option, <coughs> or I do have the option, of writing to the current governor introducing myself and asking if they'd like to extend my term. Um, so I don't know what I would do about that. I guess I'm considering that now. A lot of that would have to do with who replaces Commissioner Chadwick. So uh, I guess I have to make up my mind about that before April 12th, or well before April 12th. Um, in spite of how I am as a chair, and You're I, fine. No, I'm not. 
I look good on paper. So when I approach um, a new governor, I'm likely, I'd like to think I'm likely to get appointed if nobody else is, uh, especially if nobody else is applying. So uh, the, rea the reality may be uh, different than the appearance on paper. So I'm just saying, you know, there's a chance I'll be here longer, but um, I would need someone that I can work with to, uh, to stay on. And then my final thought was um, not having an LTO here uh, and vacancies appear on this board. You would think that maybe some tenants would want to take responsibility for their actions in their complex here, because I don't know how that gets done any other way. Well, we do have a tenant board member, and we have another board member that is a tenant. Right, I understand that. Yeah. All right, thank you, Harry. And we'll, we'll be missing you. Some of us will be missing you. I'll be missing you. Thank you. My brother. Thank uh, you. Policies review. All right, here comes Pamela. I'm going to put you on the hot seat for a minute here. I am pretty sure you offered to email us the, uh, oh, the pre previous policies and the first draft of the reviews. Yes. That hasn't happened yet, right? It hasn't happened. Okay. Okay. I started reviewing oh. them late Sorry. at night. Um, and they do okay. need some tweaking. Okay. <laughs> so, so, all right. So when might we see them, or sh is that not the question you want to be asked? Um, no, I think you'll be seeing them. So I would. I really do want to meet with Rich and the subcommittee the first. first. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Okay. I was always taught, maybe I'm incorrect, that they should come to the board members before they come to the executive director. No. We, when you have a subcommittee and you tweaked and added and reviewed these policies, the board members, that's one of the few things they do do, three things, hire an executive director, deal with policy and finance. And I feel like our policies are being held hostage. We have, we have asked so many times to, to get copies of these policies that you two people that All right, have so that's on. just what we're talking about now. I didn't, yes, br I didn't bring my hammer to today. Before they came to us, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's the way, okay. in my professional experience, that's the way it's always been. I like the idea so, of having a review done But we're by the reviewers. The it's our job as a board member so to We be set up a reviewers. subcommittee. And a sub and that makes sense to me to say no, you're just empowering yourself again by giving by giving management something that we okay. should look Susan, at before. Yeah, it Susan, it. I'm gonna ask you to stop, okay? It, we're because not, I'm telling the truth, you're telling me to stop. Well, I'm hitting because Sue, I'm, I can start raising my voice too. I'm we are no, not, not disempowering not anywhere anybody. Just because of the reasons you're All right, Sue, you're embarrassing yourself, okay? No, I'm not embarrassing. I'm embarrassed now, with my board. Would you members. listen to me for a moment? I'm the one who's embarrassed. Who has the who has the final review of the policies? The final review of the policies. You tell me who. The board. Yes. But we're okay. supposed to look so at So don't it talk the... about disempowering ourselves. Yes, all right? because we're supposed to we're review them us up. before right. the executive so, director. You're embarrassing yourself and in a way no, all no. of us. Why am I not? We have asked the subcommittee to, to do we're the first review, the campus. first draft of reviewing the old policies. And you've gotten a good start yeah. on that. Oh, yeah. Now you yeah. want to meet with the director to make everything. Sue, please. To make sure, every sure, I'll go to my car and get my hammer if I have to. Don't make me go, go to ahead, the car. Throw it at us like we've, we've been had gavels for So we have a subcommittee who is going to make sure that the ED has gone through them. But then it may be at the same time that you'd like to show them to the tenants. It will be time for the uh, commissioners to see them. I'm okay with the tenants and the commissioners reviewing them at the same time. And then we have the feedback for the final discussion and approval or not approval. So the commissioners will have the final approval of any new policies. Reese. Yes, and I was just gonna tweak what you said. Uh, so Pamela's going to, our executive director is going to work with Rich and I on, That's not on our works. errors so that you have a more accurate product to look at. But before the board gets it, really, tenants need to look through this and have input. And then the board doesn't have to spend hours and hours and hours nitpicking, right? So, so the tenants have looked at it. Pamela has looked at it for, for uh, rules, regs, laws, et cetera, like that. Okay. And so, so after the tenants look at it, then it comes to the board. The board has input but and they're the ones the that find it. Input, I'm not saying. saying. You still have plenty of time for input. Throw it at us. We've had many a gavel thrown at us living here. Don't worry. Really? Yes. <laughs>
So now listen, I'm okay with the tenants and the commissioners at the same time to save time reviewing the draft that you guys all get together. I'm going to assume that the draft that your committee f finalizes with Pam's input it's not are going final. to be darn close to a final draft. Probably. Mm -hmm. All right. If the tenants have complaints it's or uh, ideas and stuff, that will be great. And, yeah. we, and <laughs> we should bring those to our final sure review and, excuse me, guys, and discussion. So I'm going to argue with you a little bit and okay. say let the commissioners review your work at the same time the tenants review your work. And then we can perhaps, you know, save a month and, um, and institute them. You know, there's also the option of approving and the tenants over time don't like them or come up with uh, ideas of their own and we can modify the policies one by one during the yeah. course of the year, especially with things like um, the common space issues and things like that. So policies can be reviewed and adapted and modified during the year by the board at any time as far as I understand it. So yeah, let's speed this up a little bit. Could you please subcommittee try to get together with the ED as soon as you can. Okay. And the policies tend to be rather okay. short. Which We're gonna get a date today. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, the independent audit. Uh, I don't feel, like you guys are gonna vote no to an independent audit, right? Correct. Correct. So, um, Commissioner Chadwick's leaving. <laughs> so we're gonna have a tie vote, even if, if I vote for it with He's with still you here soon. now though. Um, do you believe in the lame duck thing? I don't believe in lame duck people voting on. Well, why do we even expensive? get a PHN 2023-05 if they didn't want us to have option to have audits? It was given to us as board members to even think about. Even I don't remember what that housing Mr. notice said. It had to do with the Hang fact on. that it's. Mr. Chair. Board yeah. members can have audit, independent audits. Oh, yeah. Actually, the PHN talks about what is in place now with for it, well we'll have a new one this year so lisa fallon has been our auditor for five years this year she has to step back and somebody else has to take on the independent audit in uh, and it that? is an independent audit it, it is what is required by state law and that's what was in the PHN. And that's what was in the PHN. It wasn't talking about an independent audit paying somebody sixteen to twenty thousand dollars to go no, no over four years. No one said you years. should do it. They said you have the option Excuse to me. do it. I have the floor, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Of course. So no, I think you misinterpreted that PHN. It it wasn't talking about hiring, you know, some audit company. We already have an audit. We are going to have a new auditor a state approved auditor this year. If you still perceive a problem or you're worried after this year, because this auditor is gonna be a new auditor, then if, if the board sees a problem, then we can perhaps look at a, some other situation, but there's no point in spending a whole bunch of money where okay. it's not needed. All right, um, I have a question. Can you remember your question for a second? Yes. Uh, you choose the in new independent auditor? Who chooses? It's, it, so there, it's from a list that uh, HLC puts out. Okay. Um, in the past, we would just get a suggestion, and I would go ahead with it. If Ridiculous. the board is comfortable, I can bring it to the board, and the board can choose the next auditor from that list. But it has but it to, be a, it has to be a state approved auditor. Yeah. For, yeah. for the, for the um, AUP audit, yeah. for specifically for an AUP auditor, we have to use what HLC puts out. Okay. So that's not the financial auditing. No, it is financial. It but is that's financial. the agreed upon practices. I thought that's agreed different. From it. But it has finan it has huge financial. Yeah. I'll yes. be bringing the Amherst audit that we just did and you'll, um, for in January. We just went through a AUP. And, and that audit was actually split between two auditors because of that state requirement to have um, a third auditor. We've always, um, well, we've been using Markham and Associates. So Mar Markham did our federal audit, um, which is a little bit more detailed because fe the federal government doesn't have that requirement. 
and then Lisa Fallon came in and did the state side of it. Uh, but if can I just yeah. throw out my question? So what that was, what that PHN was coming out from was um, an attorney general finding um, in Barnstable County. Let me just put it that way. Inspector, it, it was Inspector the Inspector General. Was yeah, in. you're butting in, and you're not. Um, and there's no. Was battle. it okay with you that I said it was the Inspector, no not the Attorney down, General? Just, yes. Okay. So, so it was the Inspector General. Oh, had a, yeah. The Please Inspector see. General had a finding in, in Barnstable County with a housing authority that they, they were alerted to the issue through an AUP audit. The AUP auditor found the issue. Mm -hmm. And then came the, the, the prescription of, um, of that you should be do, making sure that you're doing these audits. And then further, there's the board oversight into, into contracts and reading contracts and understanding what public housing notices actually say. So okay. there's, there was that. But it was found, the, the issue was found in an AUP audit. Exactly. Mr. So Chair, okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I wanted to say one thing. All right, sir. Without you pounding the gavel. I, uh, I'm, I may pound the gavel. What, because if every time I say something that's from the heart, you're ready to pound the gavel. And then other people can butt in and they're not reprimanded, only me. Oh, I want to say one thing. It seems like every time Reese says something, it's, it's emphatic. When I bring up the fact that we're doing this whole policy thing wrong, it's just, it's just thrown away. I'm telling you, one of the board, the board is responsible for policy. The board, you have a subcommittee. We're supposed to look at this, these reviewed policies before the executive director and before the tenants. It's not being done correctly, and that's would, why I said. Would you like to be on the um, subcommittee? No, it's already created. I can add you to the subcommittee. I don't want to be when, it's, when we're not doing it correctly. Why wouldn't you want to be on? I'd like to be on the hiring subcommittee, but I want people to help me and not what, be the sole person. What about the person. policies? The policies are what run. I want to see nah. some fairness on this board that when people say something, I'm not always. So if you'd like to be on the, the policy subcommittee, I, I'd appreciate I your help. I don't want to be on the Because it's okay. already being done incorrectly. Okay, thank you. All right, let's move on here. I, I want to clear up something once and for all in my last meeting here. I'm looking for positive constructive It's going to comments. be as positive as it can be because right. I keep hearing perceived problems. Risa has stated that to me on numerous occasions. If I have a problem, perceived problem, that all I've never intimated at all that there was misappropriation of funds, money was missing, fraud, embezzlement, none of that. Yes, you've said that. All I have said was that we have an individual who's our fee accountant, and this is where we would probably want to talk about the warren what happened in Warren, because it, he's no, our no. fee accountant too, and she's interrupting me, and you're not hitting the gavel according to Sue. I'm looking at you. Give me the gavel. Yeah. <laughs> I like want to just finish my statement, yes. because Risa continues to say that I have problems or perceived problems. That is not true. I would want an independent financial objective audit Lisa Fallon does the agreed upon procedures. She's tied to Gary to pace in some capacity, but she still has to perform her duties and responsibilities mm -hmm. under the EOLHC. Yeah. Okay? So every time that you, she keeps telling me I, if I have a perceived problem, I'm being clear the last time this meeting is I've never made any intimations of any wrongdoing. Yes, sir. I just wanted an independent financial look at our right. finances. We have now another $400,000 coming into this year's budget. That's $2 million that no one has really oversaw. Yeah, okay. That's I'm sorry all you're leaving, Harry. Well. Okay, moving on. That's it. Um, I look forward to meeting the new auditor and having a voice in who we choose to be the new uh, auditor. Uh, board tenant communications are on here. Was that something you, Chairman? Uh, yeah, it, it has to do with the fact that Board members have been told that they can't even talk to tenants, and that is not true. We, I, I haven't said that to you. We, it's been intonated and <laughs> told to tenants over the years. Okay, so, so what is the so the, what is the executive office's policy on commissioners talking to tenants? That there's nothing wrong with uh, board members interacting. Good. We, Thank we were you. told in the very first meeting. Okay. Here. That so certain board, board members, members are, you can't are allowed to talk to, to tenants. Okay. Thank you. Moving on then. Parking lot okay. surface and lighting. It's the holes in the parking lot. The, every time I come in, there's big holes in the beginning of the parking lot. 
there's big holes here. As soon as snow fills in, it's easy that a tenant can fall into one of those holes. I know that they're planning on having the, the black top resurface. The holes are one thing, the resurfacing is another. You're gonna, it's a health and safety issue to have such big holes in okay. the section back here, and what are we gonna do about it? Because once snow fills in those holes, easily some tenant can walk into them and fall. Okay, so there's a question there. Is the parking lot, are the parking lot holes so that's being repaired? Work order I, that I can it's not a work order, it's the parking lot. It's the grounds of the, uh, it's not personal work orders. It's the work it orders doesn't of- It matter, it's, it's, everything we do is a work order. Every, everything is documented. And the lights so, that keep burning out on these poles have been- This actually sounds like tenant issues. No, it's a health and safety of the housing authority issues, not tenant issue. Did you so, call me and let me Yes, I've, call, I've told you numerous times about, about the whole. I have not no, not okay. called you, Mary. These, these are Mary's the one that answers the bill when you, when you call maintenance. So what's know. the proper procedure for a tenant the, to... Um, they call the work order line, and Pam Creek actually answers that. It's not Mary Billion. There's a very specific number. There's an okay. email. Pam, I mean, Mary answers so it. The, you call me. May I address Pam Creek? Pam, uh, if somebody is concerned about safety from parking if lot holes call, or the lighting, they call the number. If they call the work order during business hours, I would answer. If someone has a concern of safety issue, I would put in an emergency work order, assign it, and I call one of the maintenance and ask them to come out and look to see exactly what the problem is. Okay, I don't think the commissioners want to be involved with this, no. but since it's come to our attention, could you please check with your new head of maintenance about safety, lighting, and surface in the parking lot? Thank you so much. Okay, anything else for the commissioner's discussion today? Yes, one thing is I, we put the 60-day yes. notice on the agenda, and it didn't appear on the agenda. That's my choice. It doesn't make sense to me to alert Amherst that we are leaving <coughs> before we have a candidate being interviewed at least, let alone being hired. So you're actually saying that if you run an ad for two weeks and give a 60-day notice that someone for a 16-hour week job is still going to be sitting there waiting for the job? My feeling is this. It's going to it's take sabotage a... sabotage is what it is. You are entitled to your opinion, Sue. Right. So, so uh, for someone to get hired here, to me it's going to take them two months to get trained to get up to speed. That should be paid, as far as I'm concerned, a paid period of training. So the 60 days notice that we're required to give would be given. They would use that period to be trained up and be paid for it, and, um, and then take over at the end of the 60 days. I will not interrupt, I will not be part of interrupting continuity here as it is with the hope of finding a good candidate. That seems really irresponsible. You can call it subterfuge or whatever, sabotage if you yes. wish. To me, it looks like responsible management. I would never tell somebody, we're letting this department head leave, or, you know, and in two months we hope to have somebody new, or we're firing, you know. I don't think uh, that's the way management recovery or replacement should work. But Mr. Chairman, when, yes. the, when the management said that they would stay on until we found somebody, if we gave a 60-day notice <laughs> this week, they you no, said you we've had it all, and it's on tape that management would stay until we hired somebody. So by putting off the 60-day notice, and then why advertise even for somebody? Because somebody is not going to wait for the 14 days for the Acheron, and maybe another 14 days for and another 60 days to take a a 16-hour-a-week job. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair. Yeah, let me just respond quickly. Hang on. Uh, I don't want to have to rely on, on anybody's goodwill. Goodwill? For the, How about the goodwill of people who have been working hard to get this done? What people? You're, I would like to know who is we. I'm what not, people? It's not no, because you. there seems like there's, there is a group behind you. What? Commissioner, yes, we're, we, I'm group getting, behind me. Do you see a group behind me? I, I do see a group behind you. I see Tim's yes. Union behind you. I see Mel King behind you. I see a former chairperson behind and you. And it doesn't really matter who's behind it, me. It does. The fact is, we're getting stopped in every area. So you're and I've never, not, and I'm, no one has ever seen anything like it. No one that that has been watching. People don't even want to come anymore because they don't even want to watch it that's anymore. Not, because that's it's not why they don't come, Sue. So I did say that we would we would be staying. 
um, through the through yes, this. Yes, you did. Right, but I could. I also could rescind on a contract, like you will be rescinding on a contract, if you continue to besmirch my character and the character no of the Amherst. I'm, I'm please, ma'am, of the Amherst Housing Authority. Second of all, I just want to clarify: the subcommittee does not have the hiring ability of the executive director. It has to go through the entire board. So you need to convince I understand that. whoever, whatever candidate you have in your back pocket that you are going to bring no one to has the board, a candidate in whatever you're going pocket. to bring, you have to, these people here have to vote affirmative to it as well. What it doesn't is, have uh, to be unanimous. Okay. It does have to be majority. I don't think she has a candidate. What is their executive office's role in uh, approving or hiring? So then there's a packet of information that with the housing authority has to send into the executive office with all of the information from the ad to the receipts for the receipts for ads to the resume all the all the other folks so like you you don't want to lose resumes we have to send all of that in there and you have to prove to the executive office that that person meets the qualifications to be okay so and they don't, that process was excuse me, Reese, Reese. Yeah. so um, they don't meet with the candidate no they do not no no that is ultimately up to them okay. but they have said no in the past yeah. They absolutely oh, I'm have sure. said no. I'm sure. Recently. Mr. Chair, they yeah. also, the executive office verifies that appropriate procedure and process oh, yes. was followed. Okay, thank you. That's, That's my concern. Just, uh, I would hope so. Okay. All right. So. So, Mr. Chairman, when you get these yes. ad, when you get these resumes and applications sent to you, are you going to be sending them to the other board members? Because we need to look at them just as much. If you guys want to see all the people that send in resumes, yeah, okay. I would like that. You're going to have to do it through a subcommittee or through the the, the meeting. Yeah. Maybe form a, a special yeah. meeting. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass them out at meetings. I. I but we I don't know how to protect the privacy of an applicant. Tactic, not how do you protect the privacy of an applicant exactly. in a public body like this? I don't right. know. Right. So you would you would keep it private, and you'd have um, and until they come to the point where you're interviewing. And then that would be in an open meeting. So I would number the resumes and hand them out and refer to them on camera according to the number of the resumes so I don't have to yeah. uh, announce names. Right? And, when, and when I was hired at Amherst, Amherst did have tenant involvement. Um, and they, the tenants, unfortunately, did get my resume. It was redacted with you know, home address and telephone yeah. number and things of that. But they did, and the, the tenants asked questions. I'm not, I would not do that. Mm -mm. I would not bring that. But that's since you don't have an LTA. So, well, hang on a second. So you would not let the tenants meet and approve the candidate? I would not because we're, be, I think that's a flaw in the policy. Or, or if there's an LTO, it, you have to be careful these days what you say to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to face discrimination. Oh, I see. So if the LTO or the tenants were considered part of the hiring process and they were to insult the person, exactly. there might be a lawsuit or something Mr. Like Chairman, that. only so if it's an LTO do, do, do they have a, a say in the hiring. Mm. Well, we do not have an LTO. But Amherst doesn't either, and they, they include tenants. I was But I think the board needs to agree on that. Oh, oh, just I'm, like the I'm board, just like you're not supposed to share policies with board members until they're already done, oh unless God. you have an LTO, and we're doing that, and that's something that's not that's highly oh. not regular. There's no so one in the, the public. I move that we. End the okay. It's part of the process. The other thing I would caution is there there is another local housing authority that there, again, too many hands in the pot. Um, I shouldn't say again. There were too many hands in the pot. They don't have a professional search team going. Um, and the chairperson offered a position to a candidate and another board member offered a position to the candidate and now there's a serious lawsuit going on mm -hmm. in, a, in a local Hamden, Hampshire County. Yeah. One more okay, I'm, I'm going to ask one question. I'm not, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to caution you but I really to be feel appropriate. Pamela, I really feel by always looking at numbers and saying something like what you just said is another scare. If you have somebody on your board who's who might be a fearful personality type, you're you're going to stop that person. In I don't think I have any fearful personality types on this board, not one. <laughs> Where you're just going to be putting, you're going to be putting a no, stop. I'm, I'm, you just said okay. you want to share. You just I said you wanted even. to share resumes at a board, another board meeting. That's another whole month going by. 
You're waiting you and waiting and waiting. I don't, ma'am, I've been trying to hire folks for, for the past two years. I don't know who you think is sitting around. I'm not saying. May I finish well, you're my putting sentence. a stop to May it, I'll I tell finish. you that. Sue. I don't know who you think is waiting around. I That's never said people are waiting around. And I finish. There are not people sitting around going, I have been waiting for this 16 hour a week job, which it, it is not a 16 hour a week job. It's minimal 16 hours a week. That's going to want to come here after viewing this. See, what you're saying it, now is going to dissuade somebody. So you you're can't keep interrupting, Sue, so please. I, She's adding negative energy to is, the whole this process. This is why okay. I advise the Amherst Housing Authority that this is a hostile board and it's a hostile work. And you're a hostile executive director. Oh, wow. Okay, okay so. I've so, yeah. had it. I've had it. Yeah. Good habit. I move that we Good. adjourn this meeting. We already have a meeting date for the adjourned. next. Okay. Uh, do I have a second on the adjournment? I'll do a second. All I right. have one comment I'd like to bring to the board first, please. Um, do we want to reconsider turning the hiring process over to, you said Massonaro? Uh, you Massonaro does it in a DV main it's sale. Taking the, oh. DV it will, main sale. It will be oh. a lot safer given the behavior we've seen off DV. of and the your board behavior today. also, ma'am. Yes. So, so if it's done professionally, okay, we so don't. Okay, so it seems like we're having trouble even talking about the process, getting it done. Because nobody wants and to do the work. For whatever That's reasons. Why. So I'm going to, I'm going to, this wasn't on the agenda, so maybe I should. We, we can't vote, we'd have to vote on it, and it'll have to wait until the end of January because it's not, okay. we'd have to vote on it. If, if, would the board allow me to get a, a quote from them? From both yeah, parties no, for David. Because you're yeah, on the board. Sure. There's conflict yeah. of interest. It's but conflict then, of interest for me to get a Yes, because you're on the board of Mass Narrow. But, but then we have to get it on oh the agenda with a vote at the end of January, yeah. okay? okay? Yeah. You're Have a I, member of Mass Narrow, ma'am. You are a member of Mass Narrow. It's not conflict. I didn't I think it would be fine to get quotes yes. and even a rough idea. It is. Yes. Um, uh, can I just Our say so all this talking for all these months and all these putting the ad in is for nothing then if we're just yeah. going to turn it over. So, so if you had to point to no, one no, thing that was making this that, board right. so dysfunctional, yeah. what would you point to? The fact, that no, to the, the fact that the nobody's willing to do any work when it comes to this process. We've been talking about it since the end of the summer. Okay. <laughs> and here we are still talking. Now we're ready to turn it over. So what was the use of talking about it and doing any work at all to only get to this point where we're going to hand it over to somebody else? Well, we don't have to we don't have business like meetings, and, and that's a big problem. Well, that's the reason why, because people are yeah. putting stops to things. Everything. It, uh, okay. Can we please end Okay. This? I just have one. Uh, uh, since it's my last meeting for the record, would you be a, in agreement just to change this Amherst? Is a ho this is not a hostile board. It's a divided board. I don't like that term hostility because I don't see that I have been hostile. And when you say this is a hostile board, I'm part of this board. I know that we are a divided board. We come to this with different opinions, different viewpoints, and different positions. But I don't think we're hostile. So I do, I apologize for the blanket statement. I yeah. usually so, then feel, I usually then say there's, there could be several members. Yeah, that, that I'm members, fine with, yes. that I'm fine with. But when you, when, when you equate us all, I, I don't think I've come I across as a hostile person here. I'm trying to do the right thing. Yes. <laughs> and I've tried to do it for two years. And, and differences <laughs> of opinions are absolutely welcome and normal on a board. That's how you get it. But, but when I have constant accusations. Well, I know and, there's some yeah, interplay, and David yeah. alluded to that when we began the meeting about the personalities and all the rest of that. But I. Look, I've enjoyed the two-year experience. Thank you for your service, yes, you. Commissioner it, Chadwick. It is something else that I have never been involved with before, and uh, I am fully retired from public service. Thank you okay. for your service. And on the Hampshire County Retirement Board. Yes, so we yes I just, just finished that. Thank you for that. I just finished So I'll vote that. to adjourn now. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. So we're uh, with the sad. We're yeah, adjourning. Just, what's happening? No, no, what's no, happening? We're, we're adjourning. Voting. Yeah, but we're, we're still oh, on a oh, 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 What's happening? Yeah, we're we're right. the end. end. No, 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 that's not vote. what he said. We're turning over to oh, Mass Narrow. Okay, we're, okay, we're voting over here. We're voting to adjourn. We've got a first and a second. We've got a third. Bye-bye.